As consumers, we are bombarded by it at every turn, like the Incredible Hulk being bombarded by gamma rays. But what makes some media endure, while others are banished to the forgotten black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again? Who or what decides this? Hetero life mate Steve and Yehel want to know, and they want to know now. This is Obscurity Now. now, now, now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Obscurity Now, the show where we take a look at weird and almost forgotten pieces of media, and then we decide if they should be tossed into the black void of obscurity, never to be heard from again or remembered for all of human history. My name is Steve, and I am one of the hosts, and with me is a man who found out his date that he took home was actually a robot and was okay with it. It's... It's, uh, yeah, hell, uh, hey, man, uh, how's it, I told you to keep that private between <laughs> you, myself, and the oil service center, uh, I took her uh, to, get re -lubricated. So, how is old X943? <laughs> <laughs> she's good, she's good, need, need to get the alignment work on. But, uh, I, I love the fact that you're taking her to an auto center. <laughs> yeah, well, Steve, uh, that's, uh, I'm fucking a cow. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh man, have you ever seen Titan? That it came out like a, a year or two ago. Um, it's a French film called Titan. I assume you haven't seen it or heard of it. Is it, is it about having sexual intercourse with a vehicle? Basically, okay. So I think A24 released it. The trailer, Shocking. the trailer made it look Shocking. like it was like a sort of drive, like neon demon kind of Nicholas winning Riffin kind of thing because it showed these like girls dancing next to like cars and stuff. So we're in Valdosta, Georgia, where my, uh, where my parents are. And of course, where the great Spook Bridge was shot. And uh, so we mm, take this yes. uh, opportunity to uh, dump our beloved child on my parents and finally go see a movie in the theater. And for some reason, in Valdosta, Georgia, they have Titan. And I was like, you sure you want to see this? Are you sure? It's going to be weird. And she was to your yes. wife, you're, you're saying to my, to wife. my wife. I was like, you sure you want to see this? And she was like, uh, yes, I think it's just going to be like the Neon Demon. Another weird movie I dragged her to. So, you know, it's she's used to this kind of stuff. Okay. Anyway, we, yeah, we went yeah. to it. She knew, she knew what she was getting into when she said <laughs> yes, ideas. Yes, she did. <laughs> um, so anyway, we went to it. And basically, it's about a, uh, a like as a young girl, the lead protagonist. And I use the term loosely because it's a really weird sort of gray movie. She gets into a car accident and has to get a metal like plate put into her head. And that, I, I mean, I guess the idea is that it creates this weird uh, attraction to cars. And then there's a scene where she climbs to this limo and basically from the outside, it's as if she's having sex with the car. Uh, and then, well, I don't want to give away the movie, but she gets pregnant. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> and uh, and wow, it, it's, uh, I don't know why we're not covering. Oh, this movie. Oh, we we um, should. But, uh, I mean, because I mean, I guess it's technically obscure now. I mean, when it came out, it was a big deal, but now it sort of came and went. But I've never even heard I of think it. You'd, but uh, yet I found myself spending 20 minutes watching uh, an episode of Small Wonder, <laughs> a show from uh, I think what 1985. Yeah, something. Yeah, eighty-five to eighty-nine, and uh, yeah. So, um, in case uh, someone might be confused uh, or hasn't checked the calendar, uh, Halloween is over and done with. We've thrown it away like a used prophylactic, and now we're in November. <laughs> that's right, the month of, uh, of Thanksgiving. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, I guess because I felt like last year I had a hard time finding uh, media that featured a. Uh, Thanksgiving and I don't know I guess thanks to this show I've gotten better at research I found a whole shit ton <laughs> and then I found uh, wow. yeah this um this it, it's both a gift and a oh, curse I oh 100 percent because uh <laughs> it, it impresses nobody I mean unless someone's impressed that I was able to find a yeah. random Thanksgiving episode of a uh, I would say now relatively obscure uh sitcom by the name of a uh, small wonder and that's why we're covering it because this is a it's a Thanksgiving episode. It's November, so uh, so yeah, and that's why we're talking about Small Wonder. <laughs> so, I mean, before we uh, do the feature presentation, let's just get it out there. 
what do you remember? Do you have any history at all with Small Wonder? Dude, the first time I heard about Small Wonder was uh, due to this show because I was looking up something about something else and it came up like as a suggestion on IMDb. No, no, it was um, I think that's it was a commercial so. when we were watching Video Power on YouTube. Was that? That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. There was a commercial for uh, Small Wonder and I was like, what the <laughs> F is this? Uh, like just, a, I don't know, man. It's one of those premises where it could be either amazing or terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll be the judges of that at the Wait, end. Wait, are you but, mean? You, do you uh, mean yeah, to tell the, me that they weren't rerunning uh, Small Wonder in Puerto Rico? <laughs> no, no, no. They they were not uh, running Small Wonder in Puerto Rico. Oh, I mean, well, you know, we had cable, so we saw plenty of like American mm-hmm. TV. But um, yeah, Small Wonder. Don't remember it. I don't know anybody who watched this thing because this thing went on for like four seasons yeah. somehow. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember watching it. I don't remember seeing commercials for it. I don't know anybody who's watched it. Oh, yes, um, you do, because you know me. <laughs> well, I don't consider you a friend anymore <laughs> since we started this show, Steve. So as far as I'm concerned, I still don't We're know We're just anyone. workplace <laughs> colleagues who don't get paid, <laughs> basically. Yes. Well. Uh, so why don't you tell me about your history since you actually, with it, since you have some. Uh I remember catching an episode or two back in the day. I think this probably came on after Saturday morning cartoons, but I think... I might have been too young to appreciate it. I mean, when I was, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was really young, I mean, aside from like the A-Team and Knight Rider, if it wasn't animated, I didn't care about it. So when this came on after, you know, whatever cartoons, mask or whatever, I was just like, what's this? This is weird. No thanks. Yeah, and and, and I guess you would have been like the episode that we watched, I think uh, it aired in 1986. Mm -hmm. So you would have been what, like four? Yeah, I mean, so I must have watched it on a rerun then, because I mean, I doubt. God, yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible I could have caught it as a four-year-old, but there's no way I could possibly remember it. Um, oh, you? I, I don't know, Steve. Like the writing is so strong, <laughs> the, the special effects are so memorable. Oh man, those. Are, I don't those, know. How. Okay, all right. Uh, are you ready to get into this thing? I'm ready to get all into. All right, it, let's Steve. do it. Welcome to your feature presentation. Small wonder. As you hell said, it ran from 1985 to 1989. Somehow they got four seasons out of this premise, and there were 96 episodes. And the specific episode that we are watching, which you also can watch for free on YouTube, is season two, episode 12, uh, conveniently titled thanksgiving story <laughs> I, I think free is just, I, I i think a price will be oh, you're gonna lose <laughs> 22 minutes of your life or maybe not we'll see maybe maybe not maybe you'll gain 20 a 22 minute experience that'll take you uh to uh a, a, a the kind of excitement that only a latchkey ski <laughs> oh man that was so weird. Uh, so, yeah, this premiered on uh, November 29th, uh, 1986. So, you know, went in line perfectly with the, the Thanksgiving holiday there. And uh, the synopsis for the series is as follows. The zany adventures of a suburban family, their next door neighbors, and an innovative robot designed to look like a human child. And the synopsis for this uh, episode is... Jamie learns the value of family on Thanksgiving, eh, which which is true, I suppose, which is true. And uh, the man, the guys behind the camera here, or God, they've been working since like the 70s, and they, many of them worked all the way up until like the mid 2000s. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So the director here is Bob Claver. He directed 25 episodes, and his career spans from 1963 all the way to 1991. Uh, Some of the other shows that he directed include uh, Auto Man, which we might consider uh, covering that Mm. someday. Uh, I assume that's another one of your uh, sexual (laughs) vehicle related, uh, yeah, uh, pieces of media that you're into. Of course, because that's what I'm into. Uh, Webster, um, the Dukes of Hazzard. I mean, mm, you gotta love their car in the Dukes of Hazzard. Mm. And uh, Mork and Mindy. And uh, they, the writers here, they've got a three-headed beast of a writing team. 
Uh, the first one is Gary Belkin, and he won three primetime in- in- Emmys. He worked on Sesame Street, Love Boat, Three's Company. Uh, nothing too obscure with that guy. And then we've got Howard Leeds, who's the creator of Small Wonder. Uh, you can thank him later. Uh, he uh, <laughs> also wrote The Facts of Life. Different strokes. There's, It's weird. Like I just noticed that. Different strokes is spelled yeah, D-I-F-F apostrophe R-E-N-T strokes. I guess it makes it, uh, gives it some street cred or something. I <laughs> and guess. he also worked on the Brady Bunch. And last but not least is uh, Warren S. Murray. Man, we just can't escape Super Force no matter where we go. He wrote uh, Super Force, Webster, and <laughs> man, this, this just sounds hilarious. We got to look it up. Goober and the Ghost Chasers. I mean, that's... Uh, Oh, that sounds really I mean, good. that sells itself right there. <laughs> and It really does. And the name of the production company who uh, made this is Metro Media Producers uh, Corporation, a.k.a. MPC, which is what they were known on the street. Uh, so who are some of the uh, thespians who brought their vision to life, you hell? Uh, yes. Well, first we have Richard Christie, or as he's known in... Uh, or build in small wonder dick Christie. you gotta have a dick it's uh, the 80s you gotta have a dick right. anyway anyways he plays the dad of the family ted lawson and i believe he's like the creator of the robot too although mm-hmm. it's not said in this yep. episode but be sure he is uh then we have marla pennington who plays uh, his wife joan lawson um by the way uh, i didn't really go over what these people did because it was <laughs> so long ago um there well actually i should backtrack because dick christie is still actively on a show he is on the bold and the beautiful and he's been on it since 2013 wow good for him and he he's got 192 episodes (laughs) that's amazing uh so this old man is working every day (laughs) nine to five for the slave drivers at the bold and the beautiful but besides that i mean you know he had like a lot of one-off kind of appearances Man, those baby um, boomers just believe... never retire, I swear. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I didn't see anything too that really stood out to me in his resume. Marla Pennington, uh, this was the last thing that Marla Pennington was in <laughs> before the... <laughs> she said, I've, I've had enough. I mean, I mean, it was so she good. Was, uh, she was sexually like, harassed out of the I'll industry, never... uh, just like the... Uh, by the robot, yeah, by the actually. Just like the female member of uh, Dark Place. Yeah. So, yeah, she didn't really act outside of this, uh, or after this, I should say. She was on 18 episodes of Soap, and besides that, just, like, one-off guest appearances. Uh, then we've got Jerry Superan, uh, who plays the, uh, the the son of the family. His name is mm-hmm. Jamie, and it's a, it's a Jamie-heavy episode, <laughs> this yes, one. Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, Jamie Superan must have, like, uh, thought it was a little too much for him because he also quit acting after a Small oh, Wonder. Wow. Um, so yeah, and he didn't really do any much be- before this outside of one off guest appearances. Uh, I'm gonna actually name um, somebody else here. Uh, Tiffany Brissett, obviously, I uh, gotta name her. She did, she played Vicky the robot. Uh, she did act a little bit after this, but just a couple like small parts. She was on seven episodes of something called Equal Justice mm-hmm. in the 1990 to 1991, but besides that. Really nothing else. However, the biggest star, uh, the person I recognized right away was uh, Basil Hoffman, who uh, played, uh, hold on, I just lost it. He plays Dr., is it Mr. Mm -hmm. Beck? Is who he plays, right? Um, And this dude uh, has been in tons of stuff. Never really, I can't remember him ever having like a starring Mm -hmm. role in anything, but he's a guy that, I mean, if you've been watching movies or film for the last 15, 20 years, you'll definitely recognize his, his face. Um, I guess he's probably known. I guess he was like Buster Keaton was like his first big oh, thing. Oh, interesting. So, anyways, um, that pretty much rounds out. The oh, you cast. mean he wasn't on Star Trek? Characters. No, I checked. <laughs> I, I, I was like, this guy was Ooh, I had my original series. But I had my not. finger on the button there, literally. Yeah, I didn't find anybody this time, and, and I checked everybody, even the uh, producer. But uh, last stars. but not least, there was no uh, that the little little girl uh, who played Harriet. Uh, Emily, was she in anything worth mentioning? 
Oh, yeah, I do have her pulled up here. So she acted a little bit longer. She was just in a bunch of um, one-off stuff as well. She was in an episode of ALF. Yes! Uh, ALF maybe. Connection! Oh! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, but the other thing that she had, like, a uh, significant contribution to was some show called uh, Christy. Mm-hmm. She did not play Christy. <laughs> By the way, she played Ruby <laughs> May. She was in 20 episodes of that. Nice. Uh, and, yeah, but... Uh, you know, these people, uh, for the most part, outside of the guest star of the show, like a lot of them didn't really do too much. Well, after back this. then, I would say they probably didn't even need to because like the uh, the residuals what they would have gotten on this show would probably be enough to like take care of them for the rest of their lives. I mean, assuming that this show spent a lot of time in syndication. Oh, it did. Which... Um, I oh, got some notes here. It it went. Uh, it went foreign. <laughs> it played in Italy and Brazil and was known as Super Vicky. Uh, and uh, some other sort of little fun facts. The tapings took place on Friday afternoons, but scenes using the detailed special effects like blue screen were taped the day before without a studio audience. Ooh. And, uh, wow. and I know you're going to want to. So I wonder if they I wonder if they superimposed them live and let the live audience see it like on a TV or something. Yeah, or my guess uh, is that maybe it just wasn't even there and they just added the laugh track in later. Um, I mean, that's what I assumed, mm-hmm. that they were doing it in post and then adding it later. But the fact that they filmed the special effects the day before makes me wonder if they... Because uh, I know, for example, on Saved by the Bell, they would sometimes, uh, like if they were doing dream sequences, they would film them before uh, the live audience came right. in. And then they would show the dream sequence to the audience, on live audience on TV, and they would react to right. it, and they would still use like their laugh and stuff. Well, so. lucky for them, I mean, uh, Mark Paul Gosseler actually has the ability to stop time, you know, when he does his timeout. So it saved yes, him a lot of yes. money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, one last little uh, fun fact, because I know after this episode, you're going to want to like dive deeper into the lore of Small mm-hmm. Wonder. And you're probably asking yourself, how is this uh, little girl? How are they going to compensate for this little girl like uh, growing up if she's supposed to be a robot? I know how. Well, they're going to cancel the show. <laughs> well, fear not, <laughs> you hell, because they wrote it in to where Ted, uh, the dad, added a growth chip in Vicky so she can grow and catch up to the other kids and avoid suspicion. <laughs> you, you know, they, they kind of did that with, uh, in with Star data, Trek too, right? a little bit. The data, yeah, like they may, they make like one mention once about like how he's supposed to like age over time, but then it never gets brought up again. And in fact, later on, he says that like, oh, I'm gonna be the same age and watch all of you grow. And, and then they die. did a similar thing recently with uh, Picard, right? Uh, you know, he had a disease, and they put him in this biomechanical body. Uh, to... he, he's in an android. Well, he's in, an, in like a biological android mm-hmm. body now. <laughs> Rather, why not? Why wouldn't the writers just cure him? I know, him? Why don't right? They cure him of the disease instead of this weird thing. So now he's like in a golem, <laughs> and it's like, is it Picard? Is it not Picard? They, they they pretty much like, outside of like I think one mention in season two where they kind of like make fun of it. Like they don't even mention it anymore. They're, they're, it's like the the new the new writers are brought in. We're like, oh, that was a bad yeah. well. Let's hope the new writers are better than the old ones. Um... So uh, before we get into the plot here, and whoa, watch out, there's a lot of twists and turns. Um, Mm. Like, is there any other, I mean, we all know that I love ALF. Are there any other, like, cheese ball, like, 80s sitcoms that you would say that you, you know, maybe liked or even like, ironically? I I used to watch Who's the Boss. Oh, yeah, that's classic. Sure, sure. Um, and I like I don't remember it being particularly funny, mm-hmm. but uh, Tony Danza and uh, what's the actress name Judith Light mm-hmm. I think that plays the mom. Like they had really good chemistry from what I remember. Do you think uh, Perfect um, Strangers falls in that category? I think so. I loved Perfect Strangers. Yeah, me too. That well, I just feel show. like maybe both Who Is the Boss and Perfect Strangers maybe skews a little older than um, than what we're about to, with Small Wonder. Oh well, hell yeah, yeah, it does because I, I don't know who. I, I am so confused as to who this show is for. <laughs> oh, it's got to be for kids. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I don't know that kids would really enjoy this. Like, the kids don't really, like, talk like kids. Mm-hmm. 
You know? Oh yeah, they are I mean, I, I guess the like, worst like Hollywood kids to where they're just too witty. Like, uh, th- yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, all right. Before we spoil, like I was, I was hoping Jamie would would die by the end of this. Episode. <laughs> you, all right. Well, <laughs> he's the child. <laughs> wow, child killer, you hell Velasquez. Wow. I'm not gonna kill him. I'm just saying if something happened to him that was untoward. <laughs> not going to be that, is that how you introduce like that. yourself at the castle hi i'm yahel child killer velasquez you want to go back to my place uh um i'm just apathetic to children oh we we castle. know we know every everyone's been talking about it not active <laughs> well of field. course Anyways, you killed you killed your ability to create them so i mean that just says it all <laughs> exactly exactly i I've, I've killed potentially i'm billions. glad we were able to bring it back to your vasectomy i really am yeah we, we haven't talked about the vasectomy <laughs> for a few weeks so i'm glad we probably brought vasectomies it up. vasectomies are like uh, the but... new uh, crossfit you know when people get them they can't stop talking about them <laughs> yeah ex- except it actually works. oh um, oh take that crossfit but, uh, you haven't been to team 3d but, uh, academy you lazy fucks <laughs> <laughs> do you think that uh like the creator whoever was behind like boston dynamics was inspired by small wonder <laughs> <laughs> i mean did it inspire i think the real question here is uh did it inspire the terminator uh and, and data mm. himself i mean who knows mm. uh so yeah we'll just keep those questions in the back of our mind and uh, jump right in so the um the theme begins to play and uh right off the bat what were your thoughts about the theme to Small Wonder? Here? First, describe it, and then tell me what you thought about it. Uh, the, the theme song to me, it's the perfect theme song for a show from 1955 or something. Oh my like, God, that's exactly what I was thinking. Story. Like, I was so disappointed because I love a good cheesy 80s theme, you know, with uh, right. lo, you know, lo-fi synthesizer or maybe a saxophone solo. Right. And like, we got none of that. This was like... It was no. almost like a, what is it, barbershop quartet or something? Like Yeah, yeah. It sounded like something from the 40s or mm-hmm. 50s, like some like real, you know, Dick Van Dyke, wait till your father gets home kind of song, you know. Uh, yeah, really weird, really out of place. Or you think like they'd maybe throw in like some electronic Synthesize, sounds. Because it's, it's about a robot. Boops, it's about a robot. Like, right. Alf had more synthesizer in its theme than uh, than Small Wonder. All right, so the disappointing theme ends. And then we are inside the Lawson house, the kitchen, uh, to be precise. Vicky, the robot girl, is writing something on a piece of paper. And in, wa- and in walks Joan, the mom. And she asks Vicky if she finished writing the marketing list. Did you hear her say that? I, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be like a grocery list for their, you know, that they're going to shop for like their Thanksgiving No, that's, that, that's what it is. I've just never heard it called that. She calls it something really weird. Like, yeah, she calls it like the old guys list. who wrote this, like that's what they called it back in like the 40s, I guess. <laughs> uh, so Vicky says, not yet. And that's actually how she talks if you've never seen this show. Uh, and yeah. mom goes, can you speed it up? So she uses her robot powers to write faster. And she writes so fast that smoke emits from the paper. Uh, when you saw this happen, like, what did you think? <laughs> I mean, I knew it was going to be a long 22 <laughs> minutes. That's what I thought. Well, the... um, yeah, like, they, they, like, green screen in some, like, smoke, which didn't look, like, as bad as I thought mm-hmm. it would. I've seen worse like, on YouTube. I've seen worse. Uh, However, like whatever they're using to like overlay it, like whatever blending they're Mm. using, like clearly once it interacts with like human skin, like it turns like a, like it's weird light shade. So like, (laughs) it's a little weird, but it was stupid. Uh, But not as stupid as the jokes the dad makes. Oh yeah. Well, my favorite thing about all this is that no matter what, the crowd dies of laughter Uh, and it creates this weird, surreal world and there's there's also the fact that like we've seen stuff like this parodied for so long by the likes of like tim and eric and uh other shows that i don't know it almost feels like a joke but it's not (laughs) because this is the real deal baby (laughs) yeah and it's like not quite outlandish and ludicrous enough to be funny right right. um it's just like uh... (laughs) 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, in walks uh, Ted, the dad, and son, Jamie. Dad asks, he's, well, what's going on in here? And mom explains that Vicky was making the Thanksgiving shopping list. And dad asks, what are we having? Smoked turkey? Because you get it? Because he smelled the smoke. You get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So he's so funny that I can see why Joan Lawson married <laughs> this this treasure chest of comedy. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, he makes dad jokes sound good. Uh, yeah. So mom says, G "Great head of hair." Though. <laughs> oh yeah, the um, the I '80s mean, haircuts superb. and '80s style are on uh, full display in this. If only the jokes were as strong as his hair. Oh, uh, sort of well said, sir. Joke. Well said. Opening scene. So uh, mom says they're going to have the all original ingredients of the first Thanksgiving dinner, which like that's not even possible. Like, how could you even right. get and, that list? And they and they were like, they, they said like a specific year, like 1621. Right. Uh, so like not only are they not going, you, you can't really like make the exact same dinner, number one, but. They have the exact list from a specific right, period. and like the whole uh, which is... Thanksgiving thing is, uh, I don't know, it's like half folklore. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, right, it's right. like not really historically accurate. Um, Speaking of not his, uh, well, what, what, it was weird when they start going over the list. The oh, dad I'm about to get it. to that because it it creates one of the most bizarre jokes like in the entire show. Yeah, and uh, so yeah. Their mom says that they're going to have the original ingredients of the first Thanksgiving dinner. Dad reads the list, and he's, it's like corn, turkey, and then at the very end, it's like 91 redskins. <laughs> and uh, it's... A, well, uh, well, he says like 91 Indians, and then like the little uh, Vicky, the robot, is like, there were X red, redskins at the whatever... Right at the th at the first then, Thanksgiving dinner. I don't, I don't, I don't want to take this from you, Steve. No, uh, go for it. Oh no, no. Well, then the dad says, "Well, uh, do we even know?" Uh, then the dad says, uh, "Well, I guess we'll just have to settle for three white skins and a robot." And then the crowd just dies. <laughs> yeah, so, like what? so lame. What even is the joke? I know. Well, I, I mean, I love it because there's a lot of instances of like just stuff that's not funny it's just there because it is and i don't know coming from uh the theme park world like i kind of get it but that doesn't make it good uh it, well if it was like something that was there to like move the plot along or something i guess i'd understand but this like i think it was supposed to be like a joke no, like a exactly joke. it's supposed to be a and, joke yeah it reminded me, like, when I saw when this joke uh, was bestowed upon my ears, I immediately got the same feeling I get whenever I watch Big Bang Theory. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. They deliver a quote-unquote joke. I don't know it's a joke. Then I hear the laugh track, and it's like, oh, that was supposed to be a joke? Kind of a thing, where it's like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's why uh, I think uh, the 90s, <laughs> that... The, most of those sitcoms were so like uh, sarcastic and cynical because they were combating crap like this. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Vicky says he. Uh, uh, Vicky also says that they brought twenty three turkeys, and then she opened. This is one of those that is just a non joke that it's just there because it's weird, and I guess they thought it would be funny. She opens her mouth and just starts making turkey noises for no reason. And then the yeah. crowd dies. Um, and not only does she, like, it's weird, like, she opens her mouth, then there's silence for, like, a couple beats, and then the turkey <laughs> noises, like, start, which obviously those were added, like, in a post, but the crowd, so, I mean, the, the, this whole, like, audience laughter, this has to be, like, a laugh. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not even convinced that this was filmed from the <laughs> no. live studio audience the more I think oh, about I, it. Oh, I agree with you 100% there. But, and, like, another weird thing to me is, like, Okay, if you're gonna make like the joke, the the three white skins and a robot joke, um, wouldn't it make more sense to have the robot say that than the dad? I mean, because then it's like, oh, the because because it comes off. I mean, maybe not at the time, I guess, but it comes off like a little like racially insensitive. Like it just comes off weird, right? Mm -hmm. And it would have been funny if the robot who has no concept understanding of these concepts or societal norms says it. 
but instead it's just like the dad being casually weird oh yeah being i think you already put like too much thought into the writing like way more yeah. than our uh three-headed writing team did um but but i mean i just don't understand like you have a robot who's not a human if you have a joke that maybe isn't great and nonsensical just have the robot say it and the robot rarely gets to deliver any jokes yeah. It's usually the dad and Jamie, the son, are the two that deliver most of the punches. Well, uh, I think I think we see uh, like who the writers were favoring back then. If you get my drift, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You you guys be the judge. Okay. So there's a knock at the door, and uh, Harriet, uh, the kid from next door, comes over dressed as a turkey. Basically, she's like your typical, she's almost like a prototypical Steve Urkel in the way that she's annoying and also really into Jamie. Like, uh, and right. again, wacky because she's dressed as a, she says, uh, she invites herself over for Thanksgiving dinner and the mom is like, well, why don't you want to have Thanksgiving with your family? And she says, oh, because I hate my family's cooking. Ha 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 ha. Um, and then, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many bad jokes that I just tried to like pick like the, you know, certain ones. Cause otherwise I would have been writing forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I get there's that. another knock at the door and, uh, Jane, we should also say like, it, it's also like, uh, the typical situation, like you were saying, the typical Urkel, Laura situation, family mm -hmm. matters, but Jamie is like, you know, uh, not appreciative of her advances. Oh no, no. He, she, he spurns her advances. In fact, I mean, even the family is like, they're trying to get her not to have Thanksgiving dinner with them. Like the dad kept saying, oh, it's just for the immediate family. And Harriet's like, well, once I have married Jamie, then I'll be part of the immediate family. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it's like uh, off camera, Jamie is being uh, sexually right, harassed and assaulted right. by, his, by his little girl. Yeah, I think I have that uh, written down in one of the uh, future scenes, um, but. Uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah, there's a knock at the door, uh, and then Jamie introduces uh, another kid, uh, this dude named Adam from his school, and then the um, parents are just like, hey. oh, and I should say, I, I, I'm sorry, I used to cut you off, Steve, but Adam, the actor, did go on because I was like, this kid looks familiar, uh -huh. and uh, his name is Douglas Emerson, and my sister was like a huge Beverly Hills 90210 mm -hmm. fan, so sometimes I'd catch him in the background or whatever, and he was on that show. Oh for 26 wow, episodes. Wow, good, good for him. Um, yeah, he, he was Scott Scanlon, who I think was like, he was like the geeky friend of like Brian Austin Green. Mm -hmm. He was like his best friend. And he ends up like accidentally shooting himself on a very special episode. <laughs> <laughs> From what I remember. Wow, this got really dark. <laughs> Yeah, like he didn't know the gun was loaded, you know, kind of one of those, oh, just playing around trying to like be cool oh, or something. That's they never have, uh, I, I feel like they never have gun safety episodes like that anymore. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're, it's, it's gun recklessness right. now uh, is what's in season, baby. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the mom and dad basically are like, hey, we got to get to the market. It's going to close soon. And then dad makes another weird joke. He says, it takes longer to wait in that checkout line. Then it takes Porky Pig to spell Pilgrim. And then he does a sort of pseudo Porky Pig impression and then leaves. And I mean, if, because clearly, and you know why, why he did that, right? Because at some point, someone in the writers, I'm not even going to let you answer, Steve. At some point, someone in the writers room <laughs> said, hey, this joke, somebody may not know who Porky Pig is, or this joke doesn't make sense, or whatever, doesn't quite land. So he's like, okay, we'll just have him explain it by going, P -p 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 pilgrim Yeah. If you have to do that, it's not a good joke, right? Oh, right? I mean, I think the I mandate mean, was just, we got to fill this with as many jokes as possible. It doesn't matter if they're good or not. Like, people... Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot like, and, and I'm, I know I keep comparing this to other shows, it's a lot like Friends, where they just, like, Friends is not really funny, right. but they, like, have tons and tons of mm -hmm. jokes like every scene it's like joke 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 and eventually some of them will land right right you know? i mean that's why i mean i generally don't even like sitcoms i mean in the 90s i yeah. liked news radio and seinfeld and that's yes. basically it news radio was mm -hmm. awesome absolutely we'll have to cover that one someday uh we, we mm -hmm. should yeah, a little treat for yeah. ourselves <laughs> after getting through this yeah <laughs> i'll see if i can find a thanksgiving <laughs> yeah. episode uh 
watch we watch it and we're like oh god this wasn't good. oh i so, even <laughs> i even rewatched it like i don't know about you but after i got out of high school i spent a lot of time watching reruns and i rewatched like all of news radio and at least at the time it yeah, still held it, up yeah no i do remember like when i was in college they used to like uh air it in syndication mm-hmm. I would catch it sometimes, and it was still pretty good so uh, Adam tells Jamie that he's there to help him fix his bike, and then uh, we change scenes, and we are outside in the backyard of the Lawson house. Adam and Jamie are working on Jamie's bike. Adam explains that his dad left to get a paper four years ago and never came back. <laughs> I just kept thinking of, uh, like, I don't know if you ever saw that Simpsons episode where that's what the same origin for Nelson and his dad Although yeah, it was, yeah, he went yeah. out for a pack of cigarettes and then never came back. So right, right. I cracked up, even though I shouldn't have, because this is actually serious. So me too. This is the one time I laughed <laughs> watching the show. And I was like, oh, they're not playing a laugh track. This is supposed to be serious. Right, right. And then he says, to, make, to pour salt in the wound, he says his mom works two jobs. And uh, he has to have a key to let himself in the house. And then he said... Yeah, he explains what a latch key is. Right, right. And Jamie says, oh, you've got it kind of rough, huh? And it was weird. I thought, at first I thought Adam was kind of freaking out next. But then he sort of just, he's like, I I hate it when people like pity me or feel bad for me. And then he's just sort of, uh, he goes into, well, now I get to go on a, a special Thanksgiving ski trip with a bunch of other latch key kids to a mountain lodge. Uh, and... As yeah, you do. it was weird. Like when he said that, I was like, oh, my God, they're taking him away to like a government facility. Like my mind went in a lot of different. Yeah, same here, because like he's like, oh, yeah, all I did was talk to this guy at the community center, this Mr. Whatever. And he was just like, asked me a few questions like, are you from a broken home? <laughs> Which I also. Yeah, they were at. so that's the thing is that they're so literal. <laughs> There's no like nuance. They like. Uh, didn't really, pr- and plus, I never th- looked down on latchkey kids. I just thought it was just another, you know, part of America. That's just how they live their yeah, life. I actually was a little jealous of my friends that were latchkey kids. Oh, so you're kids, just like Jamie. Like, you to go home and be by themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and I will say, again, this is like, to me, the funniest part of the whole, like, show. The only mm-hmm. funny part. And it's not supposed to be. And it's like, yeah, he's like, oh. Um, yeah, I just had to say that, uh, answer questions like, did I come from a broken home? And I said, yes. And Jamie's like, so you answered that honestly, and it didn't bother you? Boy, some kids have all yeah. the luck. Oh, God, that was funny. That was almost Simpson-esque in that line. Yeah. Um, and that, that line was supposed mm-hmm. to be funny. But uh, I was already laughing when he said, like, he answered that he came from a broken home. Right, right. Like, it's just so literal, no, no nuance at all. Now, okay, yeah. so, but, oh, I'm sorry. But back to what you were saying, though, like, I thought it was going to turn out that, like, the guy that, like, gave, um, what was his friend's name? Uh, Adam. That gave Adam the form, the latchkey kid, to go on this trip was going to end up being, like, a child predator. Yeah, I I thought thought. they might go that, um, that route. And that he would end up, like, at Thanksgiving dinner with Yeah, uh, that's what I was about to ask you. I was about to ask, like, so we were introduced to Adam. Immediately, I was like that kid's going to have Thanksgiving with them at the end. Like the mom is going to have to work an extra shift or something. Uh, but as we're about to see, it does but, not go that way. <laughs> nope. He just gets to go on his trip. Good. For yeah. Him. So now we are in dad's like little work area, basically where he has his like Commodore 64 set up. Uh, and uh, Jamie's there. He tells his dad that he has an idea how to, mo- how to make Thanksgiving more fun. And Jamie tells his dad, instead of just watching football, why don't we go out and play it? And then uh, mom is there and uh, she says, you have fun your way and we'll have fun our way, indicating that they're going to have sex later. (laughs) Yeah. First, yeah, they do like a weird, they say we're going to do a huddle because I guess their plan after Turkey was to like fall asleep on the couch watching Mm -hmm. football. The parents plan. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, let's, we'll do a huddle over your idea. And they have this weird, they grab each other's like heads, yeah. right? And like kind of whisper yeah. to each other. <laughs> it was, it was, it was very awkward. And I'm, I'm, and I guess they agreed to have yeah. sex. I, I mean, I was huddle. surprised there was any kind of even, uh, you know, an off mention that there was possible biological sex in this show. 
Yeah, and like the mom does this weird like eyebrows like going up and down thing. She's like, Whoa, I'm Oh I'm yeah, like, yeah. She she likes it. She was into it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to figure out the whole point of this. I, I guess the whole point of the scene is that like, so Jamie thinks his Thanksgiving is boring compared to Adam's. So he's trying to spice it up by going out and playing football with his dad. But, you know, they just want to eat and pass out on the couch. And so I guess this leads to his motivation to what we're about to see. And uh, we are now in the kitchen. And I mean, I mean, is that why you think the scene is there? Yeah, I yeah, I, I guess so. I, I guess it was uh, I don't know, I, I guess to show that he tried right to, uh, uh you know like do something with his parents rather than just go straight to why doesn't he just play with his freaking whatever. robot fake sister they could go do anything like oh, he's bored of her steve uh... he's bored and, and like another thing i don't understand is like why he even ends up i know you're going to talk about it in like the i think it's the next scene like why he ends up bringing her to the uh because she's a robot and it's he... hilarious uh but oh yeah god hey, moving anyways. on all right so they're in the kitchen Jamie tells Vicky he wishes he could go with Adam on his trip. And Vicky, for no reason, makes dumb turkey noises again. And then Jamie says, he's got an idea. And then they do the classic lame-o, I'm going to whisper into your ear. But then we're not going to get to hear it because, yeah, yeah, yeah just classic lame-o 80s trope. And now... Well, hopefully he wasn't whispering whatever uh, the mom was whispering. Yeah, to let's hope. So we're at the community center. Jamie tells Vicky to look sad because they're supposed to be from a broken home. And she makes this dumb little squinched up face like this that, of course, the audience, if they're real, thinks is just hilarious. Um, Mr. Mm. Beck enters. Uh, Jamie says they are latchkey kids. I mean, again, completely literal, like no nuance at all, and turns in his application, says his dad went out for a pizza and never came back. Uh, Vicky makes the same dumb face, and um, and then my question to you here, Yehel, is like, how did they even get to the community center? These kids can't even I drive. Don't know. I mean, it must be like extremely close by. Do you think, think Vicky of, transformed? Yeah, and got... She's a transformer and turned into like a scooter or a car. <laughs> Maybe I mean, right? She's supposed to be this like super strong robot maybe he just got on her shoulders and she just like ran mm -hmm. them there uh I don't, I don't yeah know. <laughs> whoa whoa don't get hot they, they don't get hot i didn't write the they show didn't think of, they, they, they again now you've put more thought into the scene than uh than they did, hey that's you know? what we do here at obscurity now we're here to right the wrongs yeah, of the could... past <laughs> Now, to be fair, okay, they could have ridden, like, their Sure, I mean, you could say the community center is, like, maybe right outside of their <laughs> upper-middle-class suburban neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to ride my bike with friends up to, like, the grocery yeah. store sometimes. Yeah, me too. When I was, like, 10 me or whatever, too. and, you know, it was a couple miles away, two, three mm -hmm. miles away. So, you know. All right. I'll give uh, we'll, we'll give the creators of Small Wonder uh, <laughs> a break. A pass on this on Yeah, this I'm one. sure they're uh, crying in their giant mansions and the... They, they were too busy coming up with these zing Right, right, for the dad. To uh, worry about the minutiae, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, I don't know, lame jokes here. I mean, basically, it's uh, Mr. Beck asking him uh, questions about his family, and um, um, Jamie is just basically like, oh, um, like, I guess one of the jokes that kind of stands out is like, uh, what's your phone number? He's like, I don't have a phone. Like, basically... He's like, who can afford a right, phone? Right, right. I mean, this is basically Abbott and Costello shtick, more or less, uh, yeah. here. And he's like, oh, you forgot to write your dad's name on the uh, application. He's like, I didn't forget. I just don't yeah. remember. He <laughs> left. The same it's thing? been so long since he left. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't know if that was like. I was like, did they mean to do that? that no, that's too clear. Yeah. <laughs> too right. <clear. laughs> so, uh, and the scene ends with. Uh, superimposed tears on Vicky because yeah at the beginning of the scene uh Jamie tells her to like make it look good and um she's like wait till you see my tears and then the way they shoot out it's just the cheesiest bad green screen cartoony thing you could yeah think of. It, it's like it's like if you took I bet this is how they did it I bet they took a water balloon uh you know that was like green mm -hmm. or blue then poked a bunch of holes in it because, like, it comes out, like, the way, like, water would shoot out of, like, a uh, oh, water. Oh, listen balloon. to old Tom Savini over here revealing the, 
Um, tricks I mean, that's of the trade. Do it if it's the 80s. I, I really hope to see some of these uh, tricks in the next uh, wrestling with uh, gaming documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to recreate this. All right, sounds good to me. So now we're back at the Lawson house. Mom tells Jamie she's going to um, set up the fireplace for tomorrow, basically. Jamie offers to get some wood. Mom says she already sent Vicky. Then there's a knock at the door, and Vicky's holding the entire tree. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, the doorbell. So, you know, the dad's like, I'm going to put an aging chip so, like, no one gets suspicious about her. Mm -hmm. like, well, right, right. But she's, like, walking around, like, <laughs> like pulling trees out of the ground, you know? So, a little suspicious. A little, little bit. By the way, do you get the feeling that, because the mom doesn't work, mm -hmm. but Vicky does everything around the mm -hmm. house. What does the mom do? <laughs> I'd say a couple of guys in the neighborhood. If you get my drift, oh! Hey! No, but, uh, yeah, because, like, earlier, they, like, or later, they say something about, like, the dad's like, oh, yeah, your mom's been slaving over a hot stove. And Vicky's like, no, it was me. I'm the one slaving over the hot stove. <laughs> Adam, I'm guessing, <laughs> since it's the 80s, I'm guessing a Coke habit, maybe, possibly? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go with that. Uh, so the doorbell rings, and it's Mr. Beck dropping off a consent form. Uh, and to verify all the info that uh, Jamie gave him, which I'm actually surprised that they even went that route. I just thought he was going to go with it, and then, you know, uh, Jamie was going to try to go, and then something would happen. <laughs> there, they all get... <laughs> Never mind. That's just going to make for more editing. Um <laughs> and then basically Mr. Beck explains why he's like, I've got to verify everything because some kids lie and take advantage so they could go on the ski trip. And Jamie's all like, uh-oh. And then um, he uh, told Mr. Beck that his mom is not around. And then, of course, she shows up and asks uh, Mr. Beck how Jamie could be eligible for such a thing. And then uh, Vicky does her fake crying thing again. And then dad shows up and Vicky says, where is the pizza? Ha ha ha. Good call back. I'll give him that. <laughs> uh, any, any comments on any of that? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, outside of Vicky and, and again, like it was like, this is like what I'm talking about. They should, it was good that they had Vicky, the robot to say, where is the pizza or mm -hmm. whatever? Like, that's funny having the robot do that. So I'm glad they at least didn't like. I guess it wouldn't have made any sense. Have <laughs> do you think it's that, like, all right, so obviously the robot girl should be the star and or the comic relief, right. but are the writers, and it's since the 80s, are they just so misogynist that they try to give all the best stuff to Jamie and the dad? Right. <laughs> I mean, and to be fair, like, I've never seen any other episodes right. of this, so maybe this is just how the episode is. However, you know, since one of the creators co-wrote this mm -hmm. episode i suspect he wrote like i think like 20 something of them i suspect there's a lot of episodes yeah like this, yeah where it's like you know the little girl i mean this is she's the gimmick right she's the right, alpha, right. you know she why isn't she like the one that's like handling all the comedy i i don't I, I mean i could say that possibly they maybe tried to pull back on her screen time so they wouldn't have to do uh, special effects just to save money but still then i mean steve how, how much do you think these special effects cost? I, I mean, I'm just spitballing here, man. <laughs> I mean, all they did was like film a little bit of smoke on a green screen or blue screen. That could have been stock footage from sure, something else for sure. all we know. And then, you know, get how much does a water balloon cost? In <laughs> oh, oh eight, because of inflation, $45. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so before Mr. Beck leaves, and this was a really awkward sort of joke slash line. He hands Jamie's application to the dad and says, if you like fiction, you might enjoy reading it. <laughs> and then walks out of the, it's like, I think there's like a, um, I think I heard this when I went, because I took a class for like comedic pilot writing. And there's like some sort of, um, sort of pseudo rule that before a character leaves, they're supposed to make a joke or something. And I guess like, Maybe that's mm. why they have him say that. But, like, it feels like more of a threat. Like, he gets in, like, real close. He's like, if you like fiction, the delivery. you might enjoy reading it. Uh, yeah, the delivery's a little... Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, dad sends Jamie to his room. Mom asks, what should we do with him? Vicky says to do what the Native Americans did and... Oh no, she says the Indians. Oh yeah, man. sorry, I, I'm being too uh, too woke, <laughs> too politically correct. Uh, Vicky says... How, how dare you call him by the actual right. name? <laughs> Vicky says to do what the Indians did and uh, like string him up to a tree, pour honey over him, and let the ants eat him. Which, wow. I mean... Don't remember that yeah. happening, but uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I thought she was going to say to skin him or something wow. like that, like to uh, scalp him. Come on, this is a family uh, was... show. Having ants eat the flesh off of a kid's uh, corpse is perfectly okay. Ha right, right. Eat him alive. It'll take longer for him Right, to right. So dad has just... Vicky has no loyalty no. Well, uh, to Jamie. She's a robot, you know? She just does whatever she's programmed to do. Uh, so dad hatches a plan with mom and dad um, to teach old Jamie a lesson. And now uh, we are back at the kitchen table. Mom and dad sit at the dinner table, but there is no place for Jamie. They tell him, since his mom is working, she couldn't cook a turkey. And then uh, he's like, well, what? how about you, dad? He's like, oh, well, I'm out getting pizza. And then I guess he doesn't really get... Yeah, so basically his parents are just being petty assholes. Now. Yes, yes. I mean, I don't know. I think... Are they trying to, like, teach us, the audience, a lesson about the less fortunate while while they're at it? Or, I don't know, what do you think? No. <laughs> I, 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 no, definitely not. I think it's supposed to be, like, teaching the kid. That's, this is why I was like, I don't understand who this show is mm -hmm. for. Because, like, the parents just are just being, like, petty. They didn't really come up with a plan, really, to, like, teach him a lesson. You right. Know? Uh, teaching him a lesson would have been maybe, I don't know, take him to like someplace where, you know, like like a food bank kind of a thing to like, you know, give out food to like families that I don't know, don't have anybody that are homeless. Or right. Whatever, or, you know, so you can appreciate what he has. Not just, hey, uh, if you do something we don't like, we're just going to be dicks. Right. <laughs> or invite that guy, Adam, over for Thanksgiving dinner, which is what I thought was going to happen at the end to begin with. Um, right. But. And then have Adam say, boy, I like this a lot better than the ski. Yeah, thing. yeah, something because family is, you know, supposed to be the, you know, the ultimate or whatever. Yeah. But, so now we are in Jamie's room. Harriet appears in Jamie's window, and she continues to sexually harass Jamie. I mean, verbally, verbally. Um, yeah. Oh, Harriet showed up during the dinner, too, during the Thanksgiving dinner. No, no, and, that's uh, at the end. Like, that's Jamie. At, it's at the end. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. I'm yeah. Sorry. You're right. You're right. So, uh, sorry that this plot is so complex. <laughs> As somebody twists and turns, it's hard to keep up. Not since Primer have I had so much trouble. <laughs> Primer. Piece of media. Good reference. Oh <laughs> man, good, great movie too. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. mom and dad enter. Uh, Jamie tells them uh, he didn't know um, how good he had it, and that he'll take his punishment like a man. Uh, I mean, mom and dad, if, before he said that, he was like, oh, we just couldn't eat, like, without having you at the table. And then um, after Jamie says that he'll take his punishment like a man, the parents turn and leave. But then Jamie's like, oh, you could at least argue with me. So, you know, it kind of undercuts yeah. whatever drama could have been there. But I don't know. This is a, you know, cheeseball comedy from the from the 80s. So what do yeah, you Yeah, it's a family sitcom. Yeah. So it's got a it's got to all reset and everybody's right. happy by So now end. we're back at the dinner table. All three members sit at the dinner table uh, and then uh, Vicky is culturally appropriating the Indians by wearing a headdress. <laughs> uh, they <Yep>. all <laughs> say what they're um, thankful for and then they notice that uh, Harriet gazing longingly through the window and then they invite her to join them as well. The end. So that means Adam did not get to get a proper Thanksgiving with a family. He's off skiing with the bros. Uh, yep. And by the way, uh, we, we want some, something we didn't talk about is earlier when Adam gets introduced, Harriet starts hitting on him too. So I guess Harriet will just... She's just thirsty. She's an empowered uh, the... 80s woman, and she knows what she wants. <laughs> right. But the problem is she's like, no. Nah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> right. Again, like, as we discussed... None of these kids are written like kids. Uh, they're the opposite of the kids yeah. in Are You Afraid of the Dark? They're just, you know, way too witty. I mean, and I use the term, uh, you know, lightly. Right. Um, and, yeah. 
like like they make Jamie and I agree. It's not like it's not like anybody is super witty, but Jamie is at the same level of wit as the father. Yeah. For right, right, right. Yeah, this I get the idea that like Jamie is the Zach Morris of this show, where it all revolves yeah. around him. Uh, he, I bet Jamie is what like the creator Howard leads how he saw himself yeah. as a kid. Yeah, I, I could see that. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's like that's why he wrote him that. That that's just my suspicion just because i've seen that happen in some other bits of media right. and he also uh, he loved his like dad but didn't care too much for members of the opposite sex <laughs> right hey maybe maybe because jamie like does not seem to uh i don't think he likes the dames <laughs> the way that he's written like like the way he like brushes her off is very weird right <laughs> well i mean you know this is the he's at the I'd, I'd say he's still at the girls are yucky stage of life um all the yeah, but it, it, which that I get, but he's not like saying she's yucky. He's like being like very like me. Right. Well, uh, and again, part of it's because they wrote him like an adult at times. So like when she, because when she shows up, she's dressed as a turkey for like a play right. or something. Um, and he's like, the mom's like, oh, you're gonna be the greatest turkey, you know, I'm sure of all time in this play. And Jamie's like, yeah, she's had a lifetime of experience. <laughs> well, you know, those writers, they probably have like several ex-wives and <laughs> they're just taking out their uh, frustrations yeah, yeah. Uh, on the script here. Yeah, you're probably right, probably right. <laughs> like, I'm sure I'm sure one of them has an ex-wife named Harriet or something or an ex-girlfriend named Harriet. So uh, before we jump into our verdict, like, do you think this episode or show is like offensive? Um... You know, I, I certainly don't think they were trying to be offensive. Oh, yeah, for the time. Uh, but I mean, if, like, if we showed it to some, like, Zoomer here in uh, 2022. Uh, I mean, for sure. I mean, dude, even I was, like, a little, like, <laughs> uh, like, when they start talking about, like, Indians and, like, you know, oh, yeah, do what the Indians do, you know. First of all, they, they use the word Indians a lot, which obviously, like, you know, these days. we Right, know, like, that changed <laughs> over time. Doing. Yeah, sure. Um but yeah, and like especially though when they're like talking about like oh yeah, do what they did and like spring them up and like pour honey them and let the ants eat them alive, like what? right. Well, you know, I mean, we have the government to thanks for how they portrayed the indigenous people of North America right. in the history books for the past you know fifty to one hundred years yeah. to thank for that. But, but you know, it's not just that's not the only thing. I mean, I mean, it, it's a product of its sure. time. Sure. And like the dad, when he's talking about what he's thankful for, he talks about being thankful that he's able to provide for the family. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's like the sole breadwinner. The mom is like a stay-at-home mom, but she's has like a maid, basically a robot maid. So she, I don't know what she's doing during the day besides relaxing, I guess. Right. And hey, good for her. I'm jealous. Right. She's, <laughs> you know? she's all over there. <laughs> ah, Vicky, give me some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good for her. Hey, more power to her. But uh, all right, you know, so I don't know if a zoomer would be like super offended, but they definitely be like, oh, <laughs> at some of the things. I think they would be offended about how unfunny it is. Uh, at least that's why I yeah, was. Yeah, that's offended. the biggest yeah, offense. It's... Well, Steve, uh, did you know that there's an episode of this show in the season, the fourth season, t towards the end, episode twenty-three, mm -hmm. called "See No mm -hmm. Evil." which I assume is a prequel to the Kane film by WWE <laughs> Studios. <laughs> you know, you know. I knew you'd find a way to work wrestling into this. <laughs> but uh, the funny thing is um, that the plot is just like, it's one sentence long, the plot summary. Her sight failing, Vicky cannot identify bike thieves. <laughs> wow. That's weird. Why would her sight be failing? It's like, did they forget to, they need to do an update or something. Plug her into. Yeah. Can you just like switch out the, can Ted switch out the parts? Is he too busy like quaffing his yeah, hair? Yeah, he's like, too busy making on? unfunny jokes is what he's doing. Yeah. He and Jamie are too busy doing one liners at the uh, expense of the women. The yeah. Lives. Then he's like, come on, Jamie, let's go to the local strip club and we'll demean some more women. <laughs> yeah. It's the 80s. Right. <laughs> exactly. This is okay. Hey, hey, Jamie, you want to go to an Andrew Dice Clay concert? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you ready to render a verdict? All right, uh, Mr. T-800 uh, Velasquez. Do you think uh, Small Wonder should be remembered for all of human and robot history or tossed into the void of obscurity never to be heard from again? Ooh, I would say toss this one. Um, yeah, it, it was just not funny. It was not so bad it's good um, either. 
And uh, yeah, there, there's nothing memorable about this whatsoever in my book. Uh, what what say you, uh, Steve? Oh, man. Uh, you white skin. <laughs> and a robot. <laughs> oh, no, I, I agree completely. Like, this is a, a perfect example of, like, 80s cheese ball uh, sitcoms that, uh, yeah, are definitely, I mean, other than the fact that she's a robot, there's nothing memorable about it. I mean, if anything, this show uh, has any kind of lasting legacy. It's the fact that it would be a, a punchline in someone else's joke or like a, you know, just a random pop culture reference uh, in some other hopefully funnier right. show or a movie or to be talked about in podcasts like this. Like, that's basically all that it's good for, so you are obliterated. The heathens have spoken. You are obliterated. Whew. Well, I feel better. So long, small wonder. No one will be wondering about you anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Did you... Uh... I don't know how much research she did into it, but uh, I did see that on the Wikipedia article they uh, mentioned that, even though it was like popular at the time, that it's been regarded uh, by critics as one of the worst sitcoms of all time. Wow, I did not see that. I, I was reading, though, that after the first two seasons, Fox purchased the um, uh, the production company, um, the, what did I call it? It's like Metro Media. And uh, despite the fact that it was a popular money-making show, they were not keen on Small Wonder. And there was never any kind of, um, like they never did any merchandising for it or anything like that. Uh, like there was a prototype for a Vicky like doll uh, and it just never, never had, and a Nintendo game, that's just a joke. They never were gonna do that, but uh, yeah. Just... <laughs> and you would think like that this would be like ripe for, um you know, making toys, like, like you mentioned, and uh, stuff for mm -hmm. kids. But uh, again, they didn't really, if this episode is any indication of how the rest of the series is, they don't really use the robot as much as you would think. She's not like that big of a focal point no. in it. Um, so yeah, kind of weird. <laughs> and uh, I, and you know, I, another thing too is as I was watching the show, I was like, man, this feels like pretty low budget. Not, not just the special effects, because I expected those to be mm -hmm. crappy. Uh, just about any 80s show, especially a sitcom in the 80s that had special effects. It, it was always right. like, not good, right? right? Um, so it was about what I expected for the special effects, but I was like, man, the whole show just feels like it's only taking place like in three locations. The house, yeah, in the house. Yeah. And, uh, and, and at the Community office center, or whatever for yeah. that guy. Right. So, you know, the house is obviously going to be a standing set. I'm sure they use that their draw, quote unquote driveway. Uh, a bunch of times too in, in other episodes. So yeah, and I was reading that it was considered a pretty low budget sitcom yep, at the yep. time. I read that too. Mm -hmm. As far as how much it costs. So yeah, really weird that Fox, I, you know, maybe the reason why they didn't keep going with it despite it making them money, having decent ratings and all that stuff and that being cheap, inexpensive to produce, it's like Fox was trying to build itself as a network. Right. And maybe they didn't want to be known as a network that had shit on it. <laughs> Man, when Fox started out, they had some great stuff. Uh, Alien Nation. Um, yeah. Right. Well, this almost would have fit into that. I remember they had a lot of, like, sci-fi and, and stuff like that. But no, they were right. Yeah, they really missed out by not doing an Alien Nation Small Wonder crossover. <laughs> Uh, where both the aliens from Alienation and Vicky like share a rodent. Right. Uh, yeah. Some. Oh, wait, I'm thinking of V. <laughs> Actually, it's when they eat the rodents or the parrot eats or whatever. So, someone uh, should do uh, like a parody cartoon where like uh, the Cylons like you know destroy Vicky or the Terminator or something like that. But but then it'll just look like they're ripping apart a little girl and eh, that doesn't really uh, doesn't really work all that great. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that this is the uh, second? uh animatronic or robot centric show that howard leeds worked on well uh what was the first so in 1964 he um was a producer on a sitcom with julie newmar and bob cummings i don't know who that is but it was the same premise as small wonder except basically the android or the robot was an adult female. oh man i can't believe i missed uh, that uh what was the name of that show uh, My Living Doll, which... Uh, <laughs> Boy, that takes that out a whole a new little, meaning here in sketchy, 2022. Uh, yeah, they're, they're like pumping those out in those Japanese factories, yeah. right? 
Yeah, I think it was produced by Adam and Eve Toys. I'm not sure who that is. But, uh... <laughs> nice, nice. Well, anything else to say about Small Wonder before we wander off here? Uh, no, I, I would love to never discuss this. <laughs> no, no problem. See, we already <laughs> banished it from uh, human existence, so no one will ever talk sure. about it again. All right, well, that is uh, our show. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, how about a like or share it with some of your friends if you got any enjoyment from here, and uh, we'd love your sub. And, of course, if you'd like to support even further, uh, that there's a comic book that I'm going to show a comic book or comic. There's a comic that uh, I produced, and there will be a promo for it once we're done. There's a link in the description if you'd like to purchase one. And if comics aren't your thing, you can always support us on uh, PayPal. But uh, uh, anything else to add, Yehel? Uh, no. Uh, fun episode, despite it not being a fun episode to cover. Mm. But you know what, Steve? Uh, you're fantastic, made of plastic with <laughs> microchips here and there. You're a small wonder that brings love and laughter everywhere. Well, I just want you that's, to know that. Uh, that's, I've been waiting for you to say those words ever since we started this yeah. show. Yeah, those are some of the lyrics from the theme song for those listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to put, like, uh, you know, some... Um, bongos behind you and uh and then it'll make it all that much better so okay that uh that's it we'll see you next sunday as we continue to unearth even more obscure media only on obscurity now see you next time i'm having a weird weird day my name's adam where i'm from i'm known as the zero thief depending on who you ask some might say i'm the best thief but believe it or not, even the best screws up every once in a while. And that's what I did, and I had to make a fast getaway. I ended up crash landing on this bizarre planet. Turns out, I didn't get away fast enough. These winged freaks followed me here. But it's just us here, zero feet, on this empty backwards planet. So start talking, either to me or my way. Okay, okay, I do have something to tell you. It's about the planet. It's not that empty. Come on, man. I thought you were going to die. Cut me loose. Cut me loose. Behind you. Whoa. Thought I was done for. It was going to be a light snack for a snarling creature. But then she showed up, riding on the back of one of those monsters like it was nothing. And with a wave of her hand, the other razor toothed beast just stomped away. I'd never seen anyone like her before in my life. I thought I'd say something clever. Thanks, uh, have you seen my ship? She gave me a look that said more than words ever could, because I think she was trying to read my mind or something. And from there, things just got even weirder. It's it's gate, 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 two, 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 two. Er, er. 36 pages of insane dinosaur action. Issue 1, available now at reptilianmedia.bigcartel.com. Featuring a variant cover by Sean Forney. Act now while supplies last. You've been enjoying Obscurity Now, a podcast that's recorded live to tape and streamed to Twitch and YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss an episode or hilarious quip. Take us with you by following the download links provided in the show notes to wherever you get podcasts. And take notice of our various social media links. If that's what you're into, I'm not here to judge. And make sure you join us live next week at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific as we continue to discuss more obscure media only on Obscurity Obscurity Now. Now.